This is the Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Let's go nuts! It's Jimmy Nuts! Five out of the door! With your host, Mark Martinez. Because I'm the Mark and I'm awesome! The Guru. Today I'm going to break it down for all you simpleton sweat hogs listening out there in Can Crusher Nation. I don't mean to come out here week after week and toot my own horn, but toot, toot. And the English Professor. It is I, the English Professor from the County of Kings, speaking the English of the Queen. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the Dumpster Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers Podcast. And welcome back to another spotlight here on Can Crushers. I'm really excited about this one. This actually has been a spotlight in the makings for a few months. And joining me for a special spotlight, you know it's hardcore when the English professor is joining me for a spotlight. How are you doing, English professor? I'm great. Yeah, you're right. If um, if you've got the English professor, then you know this is serious business because we are speaking with whom today, Mark? We are speaking with co-author, author, you writer. I, I, I we have to find out his exact um, right. terminology that he's going to use, but of the book Lance by Chance, and it is Mr. Vincent Barry. John, once I heard about this book. I erupted for you. You're a huge, huge Von Eric fan. We both love WCCW, but if we have those tournaments and we're going to bring them back around for Can't Crush Your Nation, you're always, let's get the Von Eric's in. Let's, so I knew I had to have yeah. you along with this one. Yeah, I get a little ridiculous. Like the tag team tournaments, I put every version of the Von Eric's in there, and you're like, eh, maybe one, maybe two. I get a little carried away, but... Uh, yeah, I, I cannot wait to pick this guy's brain um, and find out exactly what was going on there in Dallas. Yeah, this is, spoiler, this is a great book. We got it prior to the interview, and I'm not going to leak anything, but holy schmoly, uh, I, I just want to get into this interview, right, John? Yeah, absolutely. We will let um, Mr. Barry tell us what he can without any spoilers, any big spoilers, um, and I want to get your thoughts during this too, Mark, on, uh, on the book. For sure. For sure. But we have to do one thing first, John. We have to take care of our bills, right? That's right. And how do we take care of our bills? We talk about collar and elbow. I'm wearing a t-shirt right now. The, uh, basic, I don't see colors well. It's kind of a blackish gray, I guess. Uh, collar and elbow shirt. I love it because, um, I can skip workouts, but put this shirt on and it still makes me look buff. It does make you look it buff. It does, yeah. yeah. Chest and the arms, yeah. yeah. I have a normal collar and elbow shirt on underneath. Um, I have my uh, Anaheim Ducks hoodie on. I'm cold. It, there's actually snow out there on the on the floor, I was going to say, on the ground today in uh, Pennsylvania. So, but hats, hoodies, tees, all the great things from collar and elbow. And Al Snow has given us a promo code. What is it, John? It is Can Crushers, capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers. No space. It's all one word. Capital C and Can, capital C and Crushers. You use that promo code and you save some money, Mark, right? Specifically, how much? 10%. You'll save 10% off your entire order. And as the cheap English professor says, it's pretty much shipping all the time. And that's always that's great. great. Especially it when is you're. Great. Especially when you're getting apparel like that. All right, we've rambled enough. Here comes Mr. Al Snow. And then when we return, we'll be joined by the writer of Lance by Chance, Mr. Vincent Barry. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. 
I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. And welcome back to Can Crushers, listeners. It is I, the English professor. Your host is Mark the Mark Martinez, and we are joined today by author Vincent Berry, uh, the author of Lance by Chance, a book about Lance Von Erich. Um, I've always been uh, a huge fan of the Von Erichs. I didn't get a chance to really see them a lot growing up until, you know, the expansion of cable TV, but I've got the, uh, the world-class DVDs. Um, there's not a bad Von Erich match, in, in my opinion. Uh, Mark, you attended an event, sort of a meet and greet with some of the legends of world-class championship wrestling. And when you came back, you said, you know, John, um, those guys maybe weren't the most popular guys in the locker room. Some guys had some things to say, and I, I stuck my fingers in my ear and said, la, 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 because I didn't want to hear it. But with us today, Mark, is maybe someone who can shed some light on what was going on in Dallas and maybe sort of be a tiebreaker uh, in this argument you and I are having. So, Mr. Barry, welcome to Can Crushers. Well, thank you very much for having me on. That was a long-winded intro. Vinny, how the hell are you? <laughs> I am pretty excellent day. Nice. That's, That's how we like to say it in South Texas. <laughs> yeah, uh, so... Before we get to the book, we're, we're going to tease the book a lot. We're going to get into some uh, special things in the book. But we want to know about you. We want to know, were you out partying with the Von Erichs? Because you grew up in Texas. Were you hanging out with Black Bart, Jimmy Garvin? What were you doing? How did you find this uh, crazy sport that we call wrestling? Well, I, I hung out with some guys that thought they were were Black Bart and, and, and Von Erichs. But, no, I never hung out with the Von Erichs. Well, growing up in North Texas, I moved to North Texas and really didn't know what – I didn't know what professional wrestling was. And, uh, you know, but there would be certain times, you know, would be hanging out with the kids. And before you know it, kids would be going home and, hey, what's going on? Where, where are you guys going? Oh, got to go. You know, and they were going home to watch wrestling. And at that time – uh, it came on like at 5.30 on a Saturday and, I don't know, something like that. It came in the early evening uh, when I first discovered it. But then it, but then um, they had a program on um, Sunday morning, and it ran on uh, Channel 39, which was a part of the, uh, uh, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And then uh, they had a uh, show that ran Saturday night on a different channel, and it ran up against Saturday Night Live. And both those shows got, like, amazing ratings. Like, that show on uh, Sunday morning got, like, like a, I don't know, it said to have, like, 100,000 viewers a week or something like that. On a Christian broadcast channel, to boot. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of weird. Right, yeah. <laughs> How old were you, Vinny? How old would you say you were when uh, you moved to Texas and discovered uh, wrestling? Just, yeah, like 82 or 80, I guess 82. Yeah, because uh, I went to the, uh, I went to the uh, world class. Uh, my parents took me to Christmas down there at the, uh, the reunion arena when uh, David, uh, or when uh, Kerry got the cage door slammed on his head. Oh, my, uh, by Terry Gordy. Yeah. 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 Against Ric Flair. Christmas, was that yeah, your what? first event? Uh, let's see. Oh, I take that back. I don't think that was my first my, my first event. I take that back. My first event was 1983. It was the summer of 1983. It was uh, the International Star Wars. I apologize. Yeah, I was not at the, the Christmas one. Uh, you could have lied to us. That was a great story. Yeah, it was a better it story. It was a great story. <laughs> Kali, I wish I didn't recant. Oh, man, it was an amazing idea. It was very Gordy, and, and I just couldn't do it because I was so small. So my, my very first match, match was the international uh, Star Wars. That's right. And it was in, like, uh, June of 83 or something, which was really an amazing card. You should look that one up. That was awesome. They had a... Uh, Giant Baba came in, wrestled King Kong Bundy, 
They had a Harley race. It was supposed to be Ric Flair, but he dropped the title like a week before, so it was Harley race and Kevin Von Erich. Uh, it was uh, the uh, Kerry Gordy and uh, Michael Hayes against Bruiser Brody and Kerry Von Erich. They had Ted DiBiase and Jimbo Terudo. They had like a bunch of people from Mexico, and Chris Adams just started working there. There was a hair match between Iceman King Parsons and Buddy Roger or Buddy Roberts. And so it was, yeah, that was that was a good one, man. So this was your W World Class. We're gonna you know shorten it up. WCCW as we call it all the time. Um, this was your heyday. This was everything about wrestling. Uh, did you trickle over into the WWFE or NWA at all as well? When when I was I you know what I didn't like the WWF then only because or now no sorry <laughs> well <laughs> all, all they showed was squash matches yeah. right you know what I mean and so I mean I, it didn't take me long to to catch on that. I don't know. Something just wasn't right. You know, it was like they they bring in a wrestler like Sergeant Slaughter and some guy named, you know, Tom Hammond or whatever. And I don't even know who that is. <laughs> it's a good you know, name, though. Would, yeah, but they, you know, beat him in a minute. And it was like, golly. I don't know. It just, it, there wasn't. Also, at that time, uh, at that, right around the same time, uh, there was like, uh, Southwest Championship, you know, wrestling. You guys familiar with that? That was from sure. San Antonio. Yeah. Blanchards, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was the Blanchards. And that was pretty good. So anyway, uh, I grew up, you know, in Texas and watching, uh, the world class wrestling product and, you know, the Von Erics. Of course, I, I love the Von Erics and they, we're probably about ten miles from my my home. They lived in Lake Dallas, and I lived in Louisville. And those are like suburbs of Dallas. And so, um, you know, we'd see the Von Erichs every every once in a while. You know, not all the time, but my friends would, or I would, or was hey, we saw Kevin at the gas station, or. But those guys back then, you know, I mean, those guys. It, wherever they went, you know, if if they were there longer than a minute, people were sticking paper in their face, you know. For sure, for sure, they're like us. Everybody does that when we go to wrestling events too. Vinny. they're always <laughs> well, on of our. Of course, yeah. yeah. No, I get it because I I get the same thing too. Right, right. Yeah, we hear the grumblings. Those are the can crushers. Those are the can crushers. Yeah, we hear it all the time. Uh, that's that's actually what I wanted to ask you was, um, you know, did you run into them in public? Were they approachable? Um, yeah. yeah. Oh man, I've got some good stories, man. I do. I got some good stories. Uh, so, uh, I worked at this Mexican restaurant and, uh, it was the day before Christmas. And, uh, it was funny is because I was like one of the only person, it, we didn't need a whole lot of people to run, run the restaurant on that day anyway. Right. Because. But somebody thought it was a great idea to open the restaurant and, you know, oh, we gotta open the restaurant. So, but everyone was sick and I'd been sick, but I wasn't sick anymore. I felt a lot better. I, I, but I probably got everybody else sick, right? So I went to work and, uh, I called my boss and said, look, one person's come in for breakfast and I'm, I'm locking up and I'm going home. And there I go, okay. You know, because they just wanted, I guess they wanted to see if anyone was going to come in because, you know, everyone was shopping the day before Christmas, so they thought. So anyway, whatever. So I'm locking the door, and it's a door that you, you, you pull it. So, you know, they, on the, uh, on the outside, if they went in, so it's like, you know, they pull the door open. Well, I was pulling on the door to lock it, and as I put my hand on, on the lock to lock it, Carrie or Kevin pulled the door open. Well, I was I was amateur boxing at the time, and I was a lightweight. I was 132 pounds. And those dudes, like, almost pulled me to the street. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, they're like, hey, man, what are you doing? Are you locking up? And I go, yeah, I was locking up because no one's come in, you know? And they go, well, dude, um, can we eat? And I was like, 
yeah, yeah, come on in, we'll, we'll serve you, you know, because we hadn't put anything away. And, uh, man, those dudes, my gosh. I'm not kidding. Terry ate three tacos, right? An order of nachos, which had, was a, like a, a dozen nachos, and had beans and steak and sour cream and guacamole. And then he had like uh, a plate that came with two more tacos and a guacamole salad and three enchiladas. And then he ate another plate that came with a steak, rice and beans, some more nachos, and some more guacamole. Holy cow. And he still looked like he was carved out of stone. And, this... and that was just what Carrie ate. Is this place still open? Because I'm starving now, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not, it's not I open. Yeah. But, dude, probably both those guys, and this was, what, in 87 or 88 or something like that, That they must have ate, like, I don't know. 5,000 calories. Seven, 70 or $80 a, a, a head? Wow. At a wow. taco joint, at a Mexican restaurant. That's a lot. That's like you and me, yeah, John. Well, go- they probably ate 100,000 100, calories. Yeah. John, that's like me and you going to spend $50 at Taco Bell right now. We can do it. But Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Wow. And then another time we went to Six Flags, the amusement park, and uh, it was uh, super hot and we are waiting in line forever, right? And this was before I knew who the Von Erichs were. And really got into wrestling, and uh, all of a sudden, people just left. And we shot up to the front of the line, and my dad asked the people, like, hey, what just happened? And uh, they were like, well, the Von Erics are over there. And uh, my dad was like, well, let's follow them for the rest of the day. <laughs> so, nice. You know? That that gives you some idea of like if they went into a crowded place, man. I mean, they just they were mobbed. They they were really. Uh, I, we tried to we we tried to really in the book, man. We really tried to emphasize how loved these guys were in, and I hope I did it, man, because they they were they were big time. They were great transition for us right now, Vinny, as let's switch over to Lance by Chance because we're not talking about Carrie or Kevin or Mike or David or Chris or Fritz even. We're talking about Waldo's son, Lance, who is a 35-year, maybe even more, enigma that he was so hot in WCCW and then... Nobody knows where he went after that. You know, he carried he carried uh, world class on his back for a while because there was no other Von Erichs around, and now boom, he's gone just like that. So, how did you find him? How did you come to love him? Let, let's dive into this book now. Well, uh, he have a, uh, a wrestling website, and I I write about you know people on the independent scene. I've written about some veterans and it's just something I, I like to do. And, um, I was talking to a referee who uh, worked in world class after Lance. I think he, I think he was actually in training when, um, well, you guys might know who he is. He's James Beard. He's with, uh, uh, what is it? SWE Fury or SW, uh, what's the, oh man. I'm, I know I'm not saying I, I Southwest know, Entertainment Fury or something. I know the who he is. is me. I know okay. who he is because I I ran across him last year at WrestleCade as well. He was actually on one of the panels of World Class, there you go. and him and him and David were both there, and they they just they spilled everything, and it was this is where my love of uh, World Class kind of rekindled again, and when I saw you. Writing this book, I thought, man, I got to talk to this guy, see if we can get the ins about this book, and and then, folks, let me tell you, uh, Vinny was so nice to actually send me a book prior to everything else, and I read it before John. This is a book I read before John, folks. Can't crush nation. I do know how to read. I started it Monday at two o'clock when the mail came, and I didn't put it down unless I had to eat, go to the bathroom, da 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 da, until about eleven o'clock that night. This book is. 
amazing. It is amazing, guys. You have you have to. You have to get it, without a doubt. And yeah. so, Mark, I just ask you, you know, just to, I mean, what is it that you liked so much about it? I mean, that would be helpful insight. The the stories, uh, of course, that I, I like knowing how Lance got his start. So we do some of that. Um, you hear about the whole, I'm going to do air quotes, and we'll probably cut, touch on some of it, the issues in world class. And then, I don't want to say this word, but I'm going to because it came to kind of how he was blackballed then in WCW, WCCW because, because of Fritz. Um, and, and that's the way that I see it, that Fritz is the one that came out and spilled the beans, guys. It was on national TV. You saw Fritz come out and say, you know, Lance wasn't uh, a Von Eric. Um, I think that hurt him. And Lance is just telling his side of the story and not throwing any slander or heat or anything towards the Von Erics. He's just given his word of, hey, this is what happened. This is this is where I've been for 35 years. So I, I, I use the word enigma because... He was. He he was in wrestling, and then boom, he wasn't in wrestling, but he was so uh, a major cog in world class at the time he was there. Um, yeah, Can Crusher's Nation, go ahead and, and jot this down, record it, um, because it'll probably be the only time you ever hear this. Mark read the material. I did not read the material. Uh, so... My questions are going to be a little more, uh, I guess, ignorant than Mark's. Um, so if I may ask, whose idea uh, was Lance Von Erich? Can you can you get into that a little bit? And, and did anybody have any uh, apprehensions about that? Did Mr. Vaughn have any apprehensions about, I guess, playing this part? Okay, so... You know, to go back, you go back to, like, um, say, like, when you look at what was happening in that territory at the time was the Freebird and the Von Erich feud, and you had three Freebirds, and you had three Von Erichs, David, Kerry, and Kevin. And uh, Mike had not made his uh, professional wrestling debut until uh, November of 83. So, But uh, David went, he passed away in 84, and so... You had this this feud, and back then, you know, it's like here, you know, today when you watch TV, it's like uh, a feud may last from one month to another month or one pay-per-view to another pay-per-view, but back then, feuds lasted forever, you know? And that, that Freebird and Von Erich feud, I'm sure they were making hand over fist with that thing, and... So they they wrote for eight months of television. And so when David died, you know, they're thinking, well, what do we do? And so Fritz was thinking, hey, man, we need to bring in, you know, another Von Erich. And plus, on top of that, they're running two shows a night, you know. And so they're going in all these little towns, you know, they'd come – come to my town and they put on four matches in the gymnasium They're, they were doing another small town somewhere in texas and doing that you know and they were doing that and uh i don't know if they were running more than two shows a night but i was told two shows a night so you needed a von eric on the card yeah and so yeah i mean you just uh the 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 courts on the the, the quotes on the on the back are, are you know, uh, Steve Casey says it. Back then, you needed a Von Erich on the card to draw people, and sometimes Lance was the only Von Erich who showed up and worked. You know, there was a period where, you know, Mike was out and Kerry was out, and even Kevin, you know, was, was dealing with a shoulder injury and stuff at a time. So, you know, there was a, a period where Lance was the only Von Erich. But a lot of people don't remember that, you know? Was it? Did he look at it as a job? Was he apprehensive at all about it? Because he was from the area, right? Well, yeah, going, yeah, he lived, he lived up there at the time. And going back to, to, yeah, going back to your question was that, uh, so Fritz, you know, here's what they, they liked about Lance. Lance, looked the part 
you know. And uh, he he was a bodybuilder and a weightlifter. And um, can I read something from Chapter 1? Sure. So uh, in my younger days, I was fat. And because of it, I was teased by the other kids. I hated being called names, and I felt miserable and hopeless. My mother put me on the Atkins diet, so I was eating meat and salad. I loved going outside and being active with my friends. I loved... I also liked riding my bike, and sometimes I rode so far from the house that I had to call my mother to come get me to bring me back home. Since the diet limited my calories, I was burning up whatever I did eat, and I felt my mom was starving me. So I figured out a way to satisfy my hunger and not waste away by indulging in junk food without my mother finding out. I discovered the love for candy bars and Cokes, and as As a kid, my dad gave me several South African coins, and one was a little smaller than an American dime. I found out that I could use that coin in vending machines and and obtain all the candies and sodas I wanted. Back then, the machines had a tray to slide the money in, and the machine would take your change and give you whatever you purchased. Since the coin I used was not the right size, it would come back, and I could still receive all the snacks and drinks that always fell. Sometimes, my friends and I would do this for hours, and the amount of stickers, Snickers, Almond Joys, and Reese's Peanut Butter Cups I ate was astonishing. There were some days I consumed 15 candy bars after school. I found out at an early age I was an extremist. Whatever I wanted or whatever I decided to do, I pushed myself to the limit to the best of my ability. It didn't matter if what I was doing was good for me or not. That's a great passage. Let me, let me stop you right there let you catch your breath for a minute. Because that, uh, Vinny, tells a story as a kid the rest of his life then. Reading the book, knowing, you know, you just read that back to me and I read that Monday. And hearing it again, everything Lance did was, uh, you know, were by the cuff here, balls of the wall. He did everything, boom, or he didn't do it. If it was, and I'm using my air quotes, stealing Snickers, he stole Snickers. If he was starting businesses, he put all his all his uh, ducks in a row and started that business. That's how Lance lived his life. Sure, sure. And, uh, you know... Um... Yeah, you're absolutely right. Everything he did. And so, you know, for people to say that, oh, Lance Lance wasn't a good wrestler, that's not true. You know, I mean, you got to remember, Lance started wrestling side by side the wrestlers, uh, you know, uh, the Von Erichs. He'd only been wrestling like maybe a year, maybe, you know, maybe less. So, you know, if I'm... You know, whatever it is, you know, I mean, dude, you're going to know I'm, I'm not a wrestler if I'm wrestling against the Von Erics. You know what I mean? Right. And so I, I think, I think that, that hurt him. He was under a lot of pressure there because he was, he's, you know, those Von Erich kids, they're probably wrestling their dad in the backyard or in the living room. He's probably showing them, you know, things since they were little boys yeah and they they could probably wrestle with their eyes closed you know and that's how accustomed they were to it lance never watched wrestling you know and so you know i i, I do give him a lot of credit that he you know because i go back and i look at his matches now and i'm like what is the problem with this guy why does this guy get so much criticism because right. you know he he he's a good worker. He's do you th- worker. do you think in you know hanging out with Lance and talking to Lance? Do you think now telling the story that you know he was with uh, the Von Erichs for a while in World Class, then he went to Portland to be Ricky Vaughn, and then he got the phone call to come back to World Class? Do you think that Lance would have wanted to? Now, if you could have redone it, um, stayed in Portland for an extra year or two to get his, you know, 
feet underneath him some more before he got that big air quotes call up to world class? Yeah, he 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 wishes he would have bypassed Dallas altogether. No, oh, yeah, wow. he says that in the book. Yeah, let, that's wow. a, yeah. Let's spoil that for everybody. He does. He does. Yeah, um, he, he. You know, he he. You know, but you know, had he not, uh, you know, run into David Manning, you know, he probably wouldn't have been a wrestler at all. You know, and so you know, David Manning was just intrigued by his body and uh, because he was a power lifter he was a bodybuilder and uh, let me see okay so several months after David Von Erich died I was golfing with my fiance Candy and her father Jim at Ditto Golf Course in Arlington Texas Candy was a beautiful blonde girl from Iowa. Due to Jim's competitiveness, he played a lot of golf and racquetball. I wasn't really into golf, but when the three of us got together, we played. On this particular day, I wore shorts and a tank top, so I was my muscled-up body was on display. Since I had recently finished a bodybuilding competition, my diet had been very strict, so I looked pretty chiseled and cut. As we played, Candy noticed a man who appeared to be following us around on the golf course and watching us. Candy had just finished putting her golf ball into the hole when she pointed him out to me. I looked to where Candy gestured and saw the man staring in our direction. I didn't recognize him. After I noticed, after he noticed me looking at him, the man walked over to where we were. At first, when he stood in front of me, he just studied my body. He didn't look at me in my eyes or at my face very much. I was curious of what he wanted. I could tell he was impressed with my physical build. The man stood about 5'8", weighed 190 pounds, and he had dark hair and a mustache. Hi, my name is David Manning, he stated. I'm Kevin. This is Candy, and that's Jim over there, I replied. Have you ever thought about working in professional wrestling, David asked. No, I never had, I responded with a laugh. And there you go. Wow. Uh, yeah, right place, right time, I guess. Um, and that's wanna... why we call it Lance by Chance. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, I wanted to ask you uh, about something I heard Gary Hart say. Gary Hart's one of my favorite managers of all time. And on, on one of the um, Von Eric DVDs I have, um, he said. Triumphs and tragedies. Yes, yes, exactly. He says that um, fans would come up to him after a card or something and say, uh, why is Kevin Vaughn? with the Von Erics and Gary Hart maybe would try to play it off like, Oh, who's Kevin Vaughn? And they would say, Oh yeah, right. Um, was his cover blown pretty early? Did, did fans approach, I'm talking about, um, talking about Kevin Vaughn, Lance Von Eric. Did fans yeah. approach him and, and say, what do you think you're doing here? No, 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 that, that, that thing with Gary Hart, that's, uh, he he and David Manning both say that they uh, that the fans bought into it. You know, the fans bought in to him uh, being a Von Eric back then. If you said, uh, you know, the sky was blue, then the sky was blue, and if you said it was a different color, you believe that too. You yeah. know. And in the book, Lance actually says that, you know, he, him going out uh, a few times, he had that, you know, rock star life uh, of being, uh, you said it earlier, Vinny, that people would be shoving papers in his face just to get his autograph or, you know, just to hang out with him. So I, I believe everybody, I, I did, I thought he looked like a Von Eric uh, my whole life, that, you know, they bought in. Yeah, they, they, they butt in. And, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, that maybe maybe somebody did say that to uh, to uh, Gary Hart, you know. Yeah. But, you know, from what, uh, you know, from what I could tell, you know, it looked as if people had 
uh, bought into it. And David Manning, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time talking to him. And that guy, you know, that guy had a pulse on the on the promotion better than anybody. And he was like 100% they believed that he was a Von Erich. And you go back and watch the videos. The, those, all those people are just hugging all over him. And, you know, they're just so crazy about him, just just like they are the others, you know? So, you know, I kind of, you know, I mean, I was there too. So, I mean, I saw what I saw, but, you know, we we all know everybody's perception's a little different. And, hey, I didn't work for the company. I didn't work for the company for, for like Gary Hart did, you know. So he got to see, uh, I'm sure he got to see a lot of stuff that I didn't get to see. You know, so so here's his quote. So they took this kid and they said that he was Waldo's uh, Von Erich's son. And when I returned to Texas, I had a lot of people come up to me. And on my way into the arena, I was asked what I thought of Kevin Vaughn. I said, who? And they said, Kevin Vaughn. I don't know who you're talking about. Well, he's Lance Von Erich. The Von Erichs lie and we don't like him anymore or like them anymore. Because we thought they only told the truth, but they lie. And he's a good, you know, he was a good-looking kid, but the underlying factor being that the first time something that the Von Erich said to be true, and it was an out-and-out lie. With Kerry losing the belt and David's death, people could overlook that. Still, when you lie to them and they present something as authentic, Von Erichs, and they are not, and it didn't do any good. It hurt them quite a bit. Isn't that professional wrestling? <laughs> right? How would that fly today? I mean, one day. Well, I mean, why, why, why does it? Why is it that the you know that everyone takes offense that the Avon Eriks can do it, but the Valiants can do it, and Kamala can do it, and you know you really think Kabuki is Kabuki? Right. I mean. I don't know. Right. It's just it's kind of weird, you know. The uh, there's the the Freebirds, you know. They always hold my brother and my brother and my brother. And those guys weren't brothers. It's amazing to me, Mark, that until we met uh, the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant, we actually believed Johnny Valiant was his brother, and those guys don't even exist in the same universe. But right. you know, we believed it. Uh, so Vince, you said the fans took to him. Um, did the other wrestlers take to him? Yeah, they. Yeah. You know what he he said? If uh, you got to remember, when Lance came in to the promotion, they put a rocket on that kid. Yep. Right. You know, so he was a Von Eric. Instant main event status. Yes. There you go. And and that's what I'm getting at. And he said, you know, if there were guys in the promotion that had an issue. With me, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. There was, you know, uh, and he said all the guys were really cool with him. He said the guys were in, in Portland were cool with him, too. You know, Jerry Gray was up there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him, but that dude's been, been a wrestler for a long time and, and worked with big names, and he never got a huge push, you know. He's probably a pretty good mid-card guy, but he probably didn't get higher than a mid-card. Right. And uh Lance credits that guy um, uh, you know, as a as a as a big influence on his career and he even said in, in when he was in Portland, you know you know, if if it if it bothered Jerry that I was getting the push then I I never saw it. And so he didn't really see it from you know another from one other guys. Another one, Dusty Wolf was a huge fan of Lance, Steve Simpson you know, they both kind of had his back throughout his years. Sure, sure. You know, of course, Kevin was opposed to it. And and Kevin's probably still opposed to it. But he, he never had beef with Carrie or or Mike or anybody, right? right? Yeah, he uh, he didn't have really have a, uh, a like a personal friendship with anybody but Carrie. The, the other brothers uh, he worked with, you know, and... Uh, but it was like almost like a coworker relationship, you know. Oh, 
you know, you got a job to do and I got a job to do. Let's get the job done. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. You know what did, I mean? Sure, sure. Did, did but, Kevin just think it was a bad idea um, for the reasons like the, you know you expressed that Gary Hart story? Did, did Kevin have a fear of something like that happening? Ke- Kevin Von Erich I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure yeah. he – yeah, but I mean what I don't understand is why would that matter? Right. Right. I mean, really, it's it's wrestling. Right. It only would have made him more money as well. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like, I mean, I don't know. It, it, it and he, and he doesn't understand it either. So, I mean, we could, we could sit here and bang our heads together and try to, you know, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's something that we're going to have to ask Kevin, but I guess Kevin just didn't. I guess he didn't like the fact that maybe it would come back to them. Right. Let's uh, transition off of the boys, uh, the Von Erics, a little bit. And let's talk about um, a couple other things that go on in this book. Uh, you have uh, chapters on Chris Adams. You have chapters on that Lance wrestled in South Africa, well, all over the world after he left WCCW. And kind of just like... Let's touch on that because a lot of people are going to look at this for the world class stuff, but uh, Lance did more afterwards. So let's kind of brief that real quick as we, you know, go on with this interview because we don't we don't want to beat. Um, we don't. And this is going to come out bad. It's going to, we don't want to beat a dead horse, but you guys have to take your own perspective once you buy this book that Vinny's selling and and read into it and really listen to what Lance has to say because he's not smearing anybody in this book. He's just given his side and what went on in the business. And I, I think what, um, I think what a lot of people, uh, don't seem to, um, know that, you know, and I, and somebody said, Oh, um, uh, on, on the Facebook the other day, Oh, what a, uh, what a promising career cut short, cut short. It lasted 10 years. Yeah, <laughs> Magnum Magnum TA's career lasted five. Right, right. You know, so you think, but see, a lot of people don't know that because he wrestled internationally. You know, and he, you know, he enjoyed it over there. The pressure was off him over there. It was successful. You know, he's very successful over there. Matter of fact, they loved him. Uh, they loved him coming to, you know, Sun City or Durban and, you know, people came out to to see him, you know. They the matter of fact, they would put him in uh, a lot of the matches. He was a, a baby face. He wrestled baby face his whole entire career. And over in Durban, the biggest baby face uh wrestler there was was uh Gama Singh. And uh Lance wrestled him about 10 times and, and no one ever pinned each other. It was always either, um, you know, it was a baby face match, but it was always like a time limit draw or, or something like that. And, uh, yeah, they loved him over there. I, I think Mark alluded this to this earlier. At some point he got the Von Eric name back, I guess after World class had gone through some name ch- name changes and partnerships and, and closed shop. Um, I read that he had the Von Erich name again. Is, is that true? And, and you know why would he want to go back to that? Well, that's a good question. You know, I mean, that's yeah, that's the million dollar answer uh, or the million dollar question. But yeah, he wrestled as Lance Von Erich his basically his entire career. The only time he didn't wrestle, um, he he put the name Fabulous Lance. I don't know if he came up with that or somebody else did, but he went as Fabulous Lance um, for a tour he did in Puerto Rico and then uh, a short stint he did with um, uh, Ken Mantell at the Wild Wild West, which is, you know what, I, I find so... Uh, interesting is like a lot of the fans will say, well, he left world class to go to the rival, um, uh, promotion, you know, uh, wild, wild west, you know, uh, that's kind of not, 
that was kind of not the deal. You know, he liked Ken Mantell. You know, he always, he just always liked him. You know, he just never had a problem with him. And but you know, nobody, nobody gets mad at Ken Mantell for running a wrestling promotion against Fritz. Right. Um, you know, Vince, we've all kind of had that job where we feel like we're doing a great job and we're making money for the company and the boss loves having us around and doesn't really want to talk about money. And I don't know that this was the situation here, but to the best of your knowledge, was this kind of the situation where maybe Lance Von Erich said, hey, you know, I think I'm doing a good job. Um, can I get a raise? D- did it come down to money? Well, he, you know, they he never really, there was not like, there was never really discussions about money. You know, there wasn't like, you know, he never, he never asked for more money. You know, um, there was a period where there was a loan taken out and I'm sure there was money taken out of the paycheck for the loan. And there was the questions of why is my paycheck so low? Uh, but there was never really, now he does say that, you know, the pay didn't, uh, can commensurate, commensurate, uh, you got me, but commensurate the work. Come on, help me out, professor. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't match. Add up, add up to it. Yeah, you're using add too up. big of words for can crushers right now, Vinny. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it didn't add up, and 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 that was that was his, his problem. I mean, and you know, you go back to like, you know, the guy was wrestling two times a night, you know, and um, in, I wrestled in hours I, apart. I, 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 say it again. In hours apart, he was maybe I don't I don't remember it in the book, but he might wrestle in Lubbock to open the show and end it in Waco, which is what two hours apart or something like that. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I think, I think Lubbock and Waco is a little further, but okay. let, let's just say Waco to Dallas. Okay, good deal. I, see, I'm well, also Waco not a ge- geographer. That's a good hour, okay. an hour, that's a good uh, 110 mile drive. Okay. And depending where you're going in the Metroplex, so, you know, but yeah, he was, he was doing that. And, uh, yeah, so there was things that, uh, yeah, I mean, he felt like he was wrestling a lot, you know? Yeah, sure. So what else can you tell us um, real quick? Is is there another passage you want to read, maybe uh, a Chris Adams or a Gino Hernandez? Or is there anything else that you want to kind of leak before we wrap this up and give you a couple more um, not book-related questions? Sure. Okay. So, um, on, let's see. On that particular evening, I was in the lobby of my hotel having a couple of drinks. After our earlier show, I was told that Chris had an altercation with one of the hotel employees. I assumed Chris had been drinking because it was nighttime and it was common for him to become aggressive under the influence of alcohol. The incident started after... Chris tried to make a phone call to the United States in hopes of speaking to his wife, Tony. The call had troubles going through, and the person on the front desk didn't help Chris to his satisfaction. Chris became so infuriated that he went down to the lobby to handle the problem in person. While in the lobby, Chris approached the bartender to explain the issue he was having with the phone. Even after that, Chris still wasn't satisfied, so he super kicked the man in the face. The, the force of Chris's kick knocked the bartender's eye out, and it ruptured. As popular as the world-class wrestlers were in Israel, it was so clear, or it was clear that those who witnessed the incident that it was Chris Adams who kicked the guy in the lobby. Chris's victim was taken to the hospital, but even worse, he belonged to a tribe that believed in eye for an eye. The group wanted to find Chris, and they wanted revenge. Holy cow. That's the story I was hoping you would read. Thank you very much, Vinny, because that, I dropped the book. I dropped the book then, and I was like, oh my God, Chris Adams just... It's not very gentlemanly of the gentleman, is it? He was going to get killed that night. 
Yeah, they had to get him out of the country. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And uh, David Manning had shared that story on a on a podcast. Um, I think it was Ric Flair's podcast when Ric Flair had his. And uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I spoke with David Manning uh, probably, I think, I don't know, several, several phone calls, probably a handful and got a lot of good information out of David Manning. He helped me with the book. There's a lot of uh, things that, you know, I mean, uh, David really, really, really helped you know, uh, he he was able to give me, you know, facts on Israel. Of course, you know, a lot of these stories happened 30 years ago. So there was a lot of stuff these, you know, Lance says it's this. And David says, oh, I, I said it was this. And I says, well, I don't know if it is that because Lance says this. Well, then I don't remember. You know what I mean? Right, was, right. You know, so... So that's that's the teasers of the book that we're going to go. We we can't. I, I don't want you to give any more away. You need to make the money off this book. Those are just some stories. I, I also dropped the book as soon as I found out what was happening in Portland, and then how it turns about. You know, twenty five years later, kind of the same thing happens. There's just so many stories that intertwine in this book. But Vinny, let me before uh, we move on to the next part of this. You could pick up this book at any point and say, I have it in my hand right now, and chapter 12, Wrestling in Israel. You don't need to start this at the beginning. I mean, it, you know what? I'm I'm glad that you said that because you and I, I don't know if you and I have had this conversation, but yeah, every, every, every chapter basically reads like a short story, and that was... That was really my my goal. Yeah, the the book does follow some kind of chronological order, but you can go to each chapter, put it down, and just be satisfied with what I read. You know, what, with what you just read. Yeah, it it is a great is a a great you know um, long story you know front to cover. But if you just want to flip through it, I, I want to know about Lance, like I said, Japan and Friends, or him in his interactions with Gino Hernandez, or that Chris Adams story. Guys, just read, the, just read this book. I have never been so excited for a book. Uh, you can ask Vinny. We talked about this for months, and I, I was like, man, I can't wait to get this book in my hands. And it was well worth it. It really was. So congratulations on writing an amazing book. Well, I appreciate you saying that. You know, that's uh, that's one heck of a compliment. You know, I, I I look at the cover. I'm so impressed with the cover. But you know, the uh, a, a book is is more than the cover, right? You know. But I love looking at the the quotes on the back of the book. I mean, I could read the quotes on the back of the book, the three introductions in the beginning of the book, and in the pictures. And you know, I'm pretty satisfied. You know, right? Potsy from Happy Days is in my book, bro. He is. Wow, <laughs> he is. So that's Lance by Chance, guys. Um, get the book. Uh, where can we get this book? For those that don't follow you on Facebook or anything, what what is the website that you can get it? And, and how much is it? What's the specials and all that? Give us that, and then I have a couple more questions for you. You can go to lancebychance.com and you can order. Uh, the book, the unsigned version is uh, 1995, or you can get a signed version. And the book is not actually signed. It is a uh, it is a label. Lance is, is me and Lance are nowhere close to each other. So <laughs> he he did sign some labels, and uh, we're putting them in the book. You can get the signed version for 24.95. But uh, I will say this: you know, a lot of people have asked me, like, hey. Um, we went, we went Lance on the podcast, and I've had some guy, I can't tell you how many times he's asked me uh, to get Lance on the podcast. You know what? This is the closest I think we're getting to Lance. And I don't, I don't know if, if, if he's going to change his mind. You know, he's told me, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do him with you. And, you know, I just don't think he's, I just don't think he's into it. I think he's that far removed from the, the the wrestling business is that you know what he had his time in it you know he wasn't really happy doing it anyway he did enjoy it overseas but i think he he liked it overseas because he got to go to a lot of places that he 
he never been, you know. And that's one thing about him is it, is he does like adventure and he does like seeing things and experiencing new things. But yeah, I think he's just so far removed from wrestling that you know what, you know, this was my this was my chance too, you know. And for me to to meet this guy was. You know, for this guy, of all the wrestling, I've said this many times, for all the wrestling stories that have, could have fell in my lap, man, I'm glad it was this one. As we are, too. As we are, too. Yeah, I mean, because this, to me, is the best untold story in wrestling. Everyone's, everyone's asked me, you know, what's next? What's it? Well, first off, I haven't even recovered from this one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I'm still I'm still I'm still trying to sell it. But you know what? What what story, you know? I mean, really. This this is an enigma now. I mean, this is this is something that's never been told. It really has not. And let's say some people f- has forgotten about Lance, right? Sure, absolutely. Well, <laughs> you know, it, people people here in Texas really want to forget him. You know, they want to erase him out of the legacy of the Von Erichs, you know. And uh the fact of the matter is is, you know, you know, he does he does share a piece of Texas wrestling history. I mean, nobody else can say they wrestled as a Von Erich. No, that that is so right. Uh you kind of stole my thunder, Vinny, as I was gonna say I know you're on your uh, publicist tour of podcasts and signings and doing this and doing that, and it's a whirlwind right now, but you have to have something deep in the archives of that mind that you want one more person to sit down to, uh, and if your wife lets you, right? <laughs> well, I, I will tell you this. She, uh, you know, she, she tolerated a lot. She tolerated a lot with this. You know, there'd be like, we'd be doing stuff. She goes, what's going on? Why are you so yancy? What, what's going on? You act like you got something to do. I got to call Lance. It's 4 o'clock. I got to go. You know, it's like, she goes, hey, we're having my mother's birthday party. She's <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, she put up with a, you know, I got lucky. You know, she she's a good woman. And, you know, she believes in my projects. You know, she believes in my writing. You know, I, uh. I before I started uh, writing about wrestlers, you know, I moved down here to South Texas about ten years ago, and I ran into some guys that that uh, you know, at that time, MMA and boxing was just super duper strong down here. It's not as strong as it was, uh, but boy, I tell you, ten years ago, five years ago, you know, uh, me and my buddies were we had websites where we. You know, I was writing for one boxing website. That one closed the next day. I'm not kidding. After that one boxing website closed, the next day somebody said, hey, I'm starting a website. You want to do it with me? And I was like, yeah. So, you know, I wrote the website. They took pictures. We did that for a year. And then I took a break. And three weeks later, another promoter uh, wanted to hire me to uh, write for his uh, MMA promotion. Wow. So that, you know, so I was doing all this. That's how I was doing combative sports. And then when that train, you know, stopped running, I uh, I took a break for a little while, but I really missed writing. And I told my wife, I said, you know, I've been writing for about four or five years, and I'm just like, you know, it was just, I just loved it. And she says, hey, you want to keep on writing? Get your own website. You know, because you're working for all these other people's websites, you know, do your own thing. And that's when I started writing about wrestling, and I started WrestleVille.com. And that was how I met Lance. So, guys, give uh, WrestleVille.com a like. Head over there. Check out the rest of uh, Mr. Vincent Berry's stories. But most importantly, go out and buy Lance by Chance off of Facebook. And you will not, I'm telling you, from number one, you will not be disappointed. And take a day off work and read it one day. I, I, I'll tell you, I loved it. It was hey, amazing. Yeah, it's it's funny you said that. You know, it's uh, everybody's told me it's an easy read. It's uh, you know, it's straightforward. It's to the point. It's interesting. And uh, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I think I think people were are going to be really surprised of what's in the book. You know, yeah, it's about Lance, but it's also about that period of you know world class. You know, like you mentioned, you know, there's a chapter in there of of Ric Flair, and uh, I wanted to share something on that. And can I can I share another passage? Do you mind? No, if go you ahead. Got the time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I wanted I wanted to share this, and then uh, and then. Uh, I was asked a question, and and I told you, I I warned you before it started that I do get de- derailed, so you got to see it. Uh, it's all right. See it firsthand. So here, this is a passage from Ric Flair, and I'll set this up a little bit. He uh, wrestled on a big card up in Portland, and then he, um, I guess, uh, several months later, probably probably about six months later, he runs into Ric Flair. In Dallas, and he's going to wrestle Ric Flair in Dallas. And he says, uh, the next time I saw Rick was on October 28th, 1985, when I was working with, working for Fritz, and I had already taken on the Lance Von Eric gimmick. Incredibly, I had wrestled Rick twice in my career. Ironically, the first time I wrestled Rick was for the title. The second time we wrestled was in the main event, but the title wasn't on the line for that particular match. In addition to me wrestling him twice, I was on several cards with him throughout my career. Rick's memory was incredible because when we talked before our first match in Fort Worth, Texas, he remembered me from the time we wrestled on the same card in Portland. You were in a tag team match with Bobby Jaggers, and Bobby Jaggers was your partner. You two wrestled Timothy Timothy Flowers and Chris Colt, he recalled. That's pretty good. I, I'm impressed that you remembered who I wrestled, I replied. So how long have you been here? He asked. It hasn't been long at all, I answered. How do you like it so far? He inquired. I like it. Fritz brought me in as a Von Eric. I'm wrestling as their cousin Lance, I explained. Wow, that sounds like a weird situation, he commented. Why do you say that, Rick? I asked. I think they threw you in the deep end of the pool. You might be in way over your head, he cautioned. I'm going to make the best of it, I assured. You're going to find out what Kevin and Kerry are really like, he warned. What do you mean, I questioned. Get ready to work, he advised. I was told a story which occurred before I started working in Dallas, before David Von Erich passed away. Fritz had grown tired of a lot of the wrestlers showing up late to the events, so he decided to implement some strict rules. First time a wrestler was late, he got his ass chewed out. The second time, he was fined $100. The third time, he was terminated. The result ended with Kevin, David, and Kerry being the first wrestlers fired because they were the ones who violated their father's rules. Since Fritz boys couldn't adhere to his request, the guidelines never stuck, and they were soon forgotten. Wow. And that was the sentiment from not just the people in world class, but, I mean, there's a lot of people uh, in wrestling that, you know, have said the same thing. You go on YouTube, Bob Wharton says it, Nick, Nikolai Roberts, Nick, uh, Nicola, Nicola Roberts. Baby Doll. Baby Doll. Baby Doll. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Baby Doll says it. And so, you know, that was – that was just the thing, and it was it was a known thing, you know. And uh, and I don't know if that was because hey, my dad owns the promotion, or that's you know. that's what I heard. I, again, I don't want to keep beating you know that uh, world class uh, question and answer thing I was at last year at, at Wrestlecade, but that's what uh, Baby Doll was there. Uh, Mr. Beard was there, Jimmy Garvin, Black Bart, Eric Embry. They all said the same thing. And that's where my head spun first time about the the lovable Von Erics. Um, in the locker room, they weren't the lovable Von Erics. Yeah, uh, I, I heard that. Yeah, I, I heard that. Yeah, not everybody... You know, not everybody liked working with them, but you know what? There's, I'm sure there was a lot of guys in the business back then. That a lot of guys didn't like, you know, right working with. So that that I'm sure is across the board. 
yes. Lance didn't like working with Kendo Nakasaki. No, he says that in the book, too. Yeah. Yeah. He was just a little bit too stiff. Yeah. So. Absolutely. All right, Vinny, we'll let you go because I know you have another uh, engagement coming up real quick. But uh, He's again, a popular guy. He is a popular guy. And He's, I can see why. You love this book, Mark. You said you didn't put it down. I didn't. And you see why. It's coming your I way. I see why. I, I will make sure it gets to your house to uh, to read it as well, sir. I can't wait. So, uh, Vincent, thank you once again for stopping by Can Crushers. We loved every minute with you. Thank you for the book once again. And, guys, let me say it again. This is not a slam on the Von Erics. This is Lance by Chance. Go to LanceByChance.com. Thank you very much. Mark, this interview was the perfect blend of giving us a little bit of what's going on in, the, in this book, but not too much. Um, it was a great sales pitch. It makes me want to get a copy, but see, I know a guy. You do know a guy. I do know a guy. And you're going to share that book with me, right? You, I, without a doubt. I said it to you during the interview, uh, as we wrapped up. Yeah, John, the way that you two talked about this and, you know, Vinny telling you stories that you wanted to hear, but I kind of knew where Vinny was going to take them and just not giving everything away. Um, I am glad that he did read the Chris Adams one because I did want to make reference to that. Man, that was that's just one of the stories that literally made my eyes pop, and a pun included. <laughs> that, yeah, so for for, for um, kind of dangling the carrot a little bit, that was really awesome of him to actually share some excerpts too. Yeah, with without a doubt. Uh, I didn't know he was going to share the Ric Flair one there at the end, so that was that was actually a shock on me as well because I didn't know how much he wanted to come out with this. But uh, four passages, and there is hundreds more. This this book is two hundred and thirty one pages, ten pages of pictures. Um, the pictures are amazing within itself. They tell a great story. They tell Lance's story and. Man, I want to shake Lance Von Eric's hand right now because he told it the way he needed to tell it. And I'll say it again, this wasn't to bash the Von Erics. This was just to say, this is what I did in my 30-plus year career, and here it is. Yeah, um, it takes guts, you know, like it or not, agree or disagree. It takes guts to put your story out there. Um and it takes guts for uh, for Vincent Berry to, to to pick this up and and run with it and, and be the voice behind Lance's career. Yeah, John, don't you think Vincent is sitting on a gold mine? I mean, as a wrestling fan, you know there was a Lance von Eric, and maybe not our kids' age, but anybody maybe ten years older than us and, and down, you know, to maybe twenty, know of this enigma. And I keep saying right. enigma about Lance Von Eric because he was so hot for a year and a half, two years. Then he went to the wayside, but he really yeah. didn't. He just went across the sea and nobody's heard about him again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you think of all the names, you know, professional wrestling that come to mind and whom you'd like to read about and be perfectly honest. Maybe Lance Von Eric is not, near the top of that list but now that we've heard the the story um and got a little taste of this book um i'm a huge fan of that territory huge huge fan and we discussed that um so yeah i i can't wait to to get my hands on that you read it in one sitting i know we've been over this and we keep saying it i just i can't believe it. i'm proud of you mark thank you i my wife was shocked you're still reading I do know how to read when I read. It was just that interesting one sitting, 2 o'clock until I was done. I didn't watch Raw Live. I didn't watch, you know, the dancing shows that we watch. Right. Uh, no, when it's well written, yeah, absolutely. If it's a good book and it interests you, yeah, you, you can blow right through it. I get it. It was unbelievable. The stories just kept me going. And like I said, if you just want to start at Chapter 25... And then go to three, and then go back to four, and just bounce around. It'll tell you the short stories. But to read it in chronological order, you live the life that Kevin Vaughn lived. 
Yep. And that's the sign of good storytelling right there is if you can start on page one and go all the way to 236 or however many pages there are, or if you can start on page whatever um, and still not feel like you've missed anything or lost anything and just enjoy that short portion of it. That's the art of good storytelling right there. Yeah. Great penmanship, too, from uh, Mr. Barry. But all right. So it's time to wrap this up, John. And guys, go out and like the Lance by Chance Facebook page. And then when you're on Facebook, of course, the Can't Crusher Wrestling Podcast is there. We're on Instagram and Twitter. All of them are at Can't Crusher 69. Uh, if you want anything, you want to send us an email or anything, we're going to be doing Ask Can Crushers. Um, this book can be part of Ask Can Crushers. Maybe John will read it by the time that uh, we do Ask Can Crushers. And I'm not going to give you everything that I know on it, and hopefully John doesn't either, uh, because we want you to buy it and support Mr. Barry. But send us an email at cancrusher69 at gmail.com or, you know, listen to all our other podcasts on Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, anywhere podcasts are found. That's where we're found. Right, John? Absolutely. And remember, Mark, just because you're trash, it doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot.